Hey guys, welcome back to what we call Talk Through the Bible as a Church. We really felt led, and if you've been with us as we began this journey together, we felt led that we can go through every book of the Bible and just... Um, Wet your appetite. Um, sometimes it's hard to read scripture, especially maybe some Old Testament books, and we don't have the context. You know, we don't really understand what we're reading and why we're reading it. And so our goal, all we're trying to do here is to put these books of the Bible in context. So when you read it, you got a little bit better understanding um, and you've got a little bit better framework, maybe a lens, you might say, to say, hey, I, I can understand and I really get what I'm trying to read. So the game, the, the, the name of the game here is read each book of the Bible. Our goal is to have a high level view of this. So when you read it, you can understand a basic outline, but it's your job. Um, I don't like to use the word job, but it's, it's our goal to read God. God's word. God's word does not return void. And so when you read these books after you check this, this, this resource out, then you have a little bit better understanding. And so we as a church, we're taking the mission, the endeavor to go through each book. And we have that. You can always go back and watch books. We're jumping back and forth from Old Testament to New Testament. And we're just, we're going through each and every book. This week is the book of John, which is an incredible book. It's probably a lot of people, if you say, hey, what's my favorite book of the Bible, John is going to rise way up there. I doubt it's going to be Deuteronomy, but maybe. Um, so this week I've got my mom, Pastor Pat, with me, everybody. I love when mom hangs out with us because her wisdom is unbelievable. But I also am so excited that um, Pastor Tim Lettingham, um, he's joining our staff. He's a family member. Um, he's my cousin on my mom's side, the good side of the family. And uh, he's, uh, he's joining us as well. He's joining our staff. He's going to help lead our South Knoxville campus and we're so excited about that. But I want his wisdom as well. Um, all of us are theologians. We're all studiers of God. Hopefully you're a theologian, a studier of God as well. And we just want to give you a few minutes, give you a little bit of insight, a little take on each book. So when you read it, you're like, okay, I got it. I can see where this is going to fit. So everybody give it up for Pastor Pat, <laughs> Pastor Tim, and we're going to start. Guys, um, it's just us, um, and I just, we look at the Gospel of John, and honestly, I'll say it intimidates me, you know, I mean, to, to talk about this, because John is so epic, there's so much to talk about, but let's go through the nuts and bolts. We know the Bible is divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. You could actually almost put the word covenant in there, Old Covenant, New Covenant. John is the fourth book of the New Testament. It's the last gospel, probably the last gospel written, and big word now, I'm going to astound you with my the, theological knowledge. It is not a synoptic gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are known as the synoptic gospels. They're very similar. They, they timeline the life of Christ. They chronicle the life of Jesus Christ, God's son. John is different and unique. So let's kick it off. I'm throwing y'all on the spot. Why is it different and why is it unique? I think it's one of the most powerful books in the Bible. Of course, you can say that about all of them. Uh, but you remember uh, years ago, of course, one of the, the, the best, the most famous scripture of all probably is John what? John 3.16. John 3.16. Years ago, you'd go to a football game or something like that, and you'd see John 3.16 out there. And uh, so they would know to go to their Bible because people knew what that was. Now people think it's, uh, we're looking for John in section 3, seat 16, yeah. because they really don't know. But, uh, you know, uh, John is, uh, he writes about the deity, which is just really a fancy word for, uh, for God. And he describes Jesus in terms of uh, the titles that he gives them. You know, in the Gospel of John, he talks about Jesus as the Son of God, the Messiah, the Word, which is a capital W, uh, the only Son, the Lamb of God, true bread, uh, life, resurrection, and the vine. And uh, of course, that formula is I am who Jesus, he uses that phrase a lot. So, I kind of wrote it this way. John tells the story of Jesus like yeah. the other Gospels do, but the interesting, unique thing is how does he tell the story of Jesus? And it's ultimately, he is going to... To basically show miracles and say that Jesus is a divine being. He is God's son. And so he's really the reason maybe we all tell people as, hey, if you're a new believer in Christ, go to the book of John, because we really feel like the way John wrote it is today a non-Christian or someone maybe struggling right. to believe because he is talking to Jews at that time that, hey, Jesus is the Messiah. The Messiah has now come and they're going to struggle to understand 
understand this. So he gives us signs. Jesus reads the, um, he feeds the 5,000. He turns water into wine. He uh, ultimately is going to raise Lazarus from the, the dead. And he's giving us all these di divine moments, but people still choose to not believe. And so there's this awesome argument. It's almost, that's what he, John is doing. He's, he's kind of giving us this, hey, this is Jesus Christ. This is what you need to understand about him, that divinity of Christ. I mean, it starts from the very beginning, in the beginning, the, the beginning of the book of John. First off, we believe that John wrote the book of John, although nowhere in the book of John says John wrote it. Yeah. It just says the disciple whom Jesus loved. And we know that down through history that Jesus loved John. And so most theologians will say John wrote the book. So that, that's an interesting thing. But more than who wrote it, it's why it was written. It was written to say, hey, listen, you might not understand all of this, but Jesus Christ, God's son, is on the earth. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. God. Right. And so that really begins to link that. What do you think? To me, the book of John, and I, I, I love for people to accept Jesus. I love for them to start living the Christian walk. And I think the book of John is probably the one book in the New Testament that was written to tell those who weren't there with Jesus. John was. That was his story. John's story. He was with Jesus. He talked to Jesus. He heard Jesus was a storyteller. He told the eight miracles that are in the book of John. But I think that was for us who are living today he wrote the book of John so that we who had not seen could believe that he indeed was the son of God. And to me, I go back to the book of John all the time in my own personal life because I like, I, I, I love to read the verses in red because they said those were the words that Jesus spoke. And that's when I tell new converts, start in the book of John, read the first 10 verses, the next day, the next 10 verses. And if you'll do that for three weeks, that puts you on a time table or gives you a discipline of reading God's Word. And because they are the words of Jesus, they're so easy to read and you can comprehend and you can apply it to your life. And to me, that's why I feel like the book of John is a very evangelistic book. And I, I love it for those reasons. What are the, any, any differences that you see? I mean, it's sometimes kind of hard to articulate that. People, you know, the Gospels, these are the accounts of the life of Christ. John is so different. And what's your take on... I, I think people get really, uh, because they've read Matthew, Mark, Luke, maybe, the Synoptic Gospels. And so when they get to the word was flesh, you know, that the word, the, the fill, they were trying to reach the Greek philosophers of the day. I think when he was writing that, that, you know, to describe the logos, logos really means the word. And so when the word became flesh and was, was born, you know, it's really confusing to people about uh, how can the word be alive? How, how can these, but the scriptures tell us in other places, right, <clears throat> that uh, the word is uh, sharper than a two-edged sword, able to penetrate the, the morals. It's used for correction and, and and wonderful teachings that Jesus gives us. And so that we find Jesus in every page. But John is specifically saying, look, you need to dive into this because the logos, the word became flesh and entered uh, a humanity in all of its fullness and limitations. So just, you know, that's my idea that I just love the way John focuses on the logos, the word of God. I think it's really cool that if you kind of, and, and I don't want to get any complicated at all because I think it's the simplicity of it that's yeah. amazing, just the life of Christ. But you have the book of, um, some people say John's split up into sections a little bit. You've got these signs that John is saying, hey, look at these signs. Look what Christ has done as he walked the earth. He not only performed miracles, he healed. He raised someone from the dead and people struggled to believe that. I mean, think about it today. You know, when you're, people struggle to understand that. And then John kind of shifts gears a little bit toward the end of the book, and he kind of turns it into, some people will call the last part of John the book of glory, which is just the all-out love that Christ has right. for not only his disciples, but for people. And ultimately, if you don't, if signs don't get you, that love that God's going to have for you, and yet he would die on a cross, he would rise again, the greatest miracle in the history of the world, um, to prove that he is God and conquer the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and then give us these post-resurrection experiences to say, hey, look at, I mean, this is, this wasn't some fluke. He's not, I mean, he's alive, and th that love is overwhelming. That's why, I guess for me, 
maybe the argument, or I don't, I don't like that word, but the, the reason that we would inspire people to read the gospel of John first is more than anything, the love of Christ, you know. And it proves that God is God. Jesus is God, the right. son of God. Right. I love the part where it says the, all the I ams, mm -hmm. uh, I am the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection, the life, the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the true vine. And it, then it just says, I am. And to me, all of those phrases are talking about the one and only true and living God. And John points it out more than almost any other author in, of, that have written the books of the Bible. And to me, that speaks to me when I, I lay at night and I, and I, I pray and I call him different names. And usually I start with the alphabet. I start with A and think of the names that mean God in all of these. I'm the door, the bread of life. I, to me, if that doesn't put you in a worshipful mood, nothing will. Yeah. That inspires me. You're awesome. That's incredible right there. That's amazing. Just because um, I raised you. We're in, this, we're in this book called Talk to the Bible. You don't need to get this book. It, it would be something if you wanted to Google or whatever you could get. Um, it's a little dry, and it's just basically a, a general outline, and it gives you us what we're doing. We're kind of doing it for you. We're giving you a little snapshot of the book. And so it is interesting if you're writing a few things down, the key verses, mm -hmm. um, my life application, which to me, if you want to purchase anything that's awesome is a life application Bible. Yeah. But the key verses in, the, in this book, and it's important to know as you read it, are um, John chapter 1, verse 11 through 13, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Mm -hmm. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Um, and then verse 20 through 31, I think ultimately Ultimately, John is like this attorney um, who's so convinced he's this maybe character witness that he's he's walked the road with Jesus and he's so blown away with what he's seen to be able to think of being up close and personal with the Son of God. And it's it's interesting that John 20 chapter um, chapter 20 verse 31 and truly Jesus um, did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written the, the miracles that he did so you may I may believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that believing you may have life in his name. It is not, John is not the book of rules. It's not the old covenant. It's not, I got to do this and cross this T and dot this I and then I might be good enough. It's we're sinners and God loves us so much that he would allow his son to walk the earth and would perform miracles, um, I don't know, do really crazy things like heal and, <laughs> and, and perform miracles and spend time with people, the low and out, the middle and out, the up and out, everybody was important. And then the overwhelming love that he would have for us to show us that and to, to show us a disciple and a, and a Gentile and a Jew, everybody. And it does culminate, as Tim said in John 3:16, the mm -hmm. verse of scripture that everybody's so familiar, but we can never lose the gratitude that for God so loved the world that anybody, right. anybody who would choose to follow him can have everlasting life. I don't, I was talking to Tim earlier today. I don't understand why Christianity is so controversial. That what are we preaching and teaching? A free gift mm -hmm. that is found in the grace yeah. and mercy, the love of Jesus Christ, who came and backed it up with his actions, walked the walk, just didn't give us a few cute words, right. but showed it and lived it. That's well, all. Christ Christianity is a very simple, but we make it very complex because we want to humanize it. Yeah. You know, since the Garden of Eden, we've always wanted to be our own God or, or whatever. We wanted to take the place of God. And so it's all about the surrender and freedom. You know, it's like John 15. I think people get really confused about the whole branch thing because if you've pruned something, it's usually cut. It, it hurts. But sometimes we have to fail in order to grow. And God loves us just the way we are, broken. But he also builds us up and helps us to grow. So it's in our tough times that we really grow from those things. Uh, I think you said it in one of the messages recently. It's We don't build character and strength from the mountaintop. We build it in those valleys. Yeah. And, uh, and that's kind of, and no one wants to live there in this culture. We all want to live comfort. We want to live the next high. But the problem is that, you know, 
uh, Jesus, even when they were on the Mount Transfiguration and they were having a great time and they could have stayed there forever on the mountaintop, Jesus pecked them on the shoulder and said, we've got to go back down to the people, you know, back down to the valley. And that's where the ministry takes place. But so we have to hurt in order to grow. We have to prune. But God came to love us. And of course, he, you know, he was broken for our sins. Wow, that was good. Y'all Facebook that right there. That's awesome. <laughs> Pastor Tim, should I say soon to be Dr. Tim, <laughs> no, no. Reverend Tim. Um, what do you think? You know, <laughs> When I was studying this, and I, and I read the book of John a lot, uh, the one thing that stood out to me was the disciples took their friends to see Jesus. Wow. Yeah, that's powerful. And I, I'm an outreach person, so that really stuck home with me. It talked about John taking his brother James, and they went and took their friends to see Jesus. And that's something we don't do much today either. We stand here, and you stand here in the pulpit, and you, you tell people that is the answer to your family's life, your friend's life, and you should bring them to Jesus. Where is Jesus today? In his house. And this is where we can learn and study and, and get the love of God in our own heart. But so many people don't do that. We're not paying attention to his stories, to his miracles, to his commands, what he's telling us to do. Yeah. What's your favorite on the spot? Favorite moment in John? I'll give you mine because I don't like it all the time, but yeah, y'all go for it. Yeah. You want me to go? Yeah, y'all think go about it? Think John about. chapter 4, hands down, is my favorite. Um, Jesus, you know, dealing with the woman at the well. He um, did not have to go where he had to go. He had a spiritual appointment. He comes to a place where a woman's not going to be hanging out at a well at noon, not there, not in the heat of the day. But he has this incredible encounter, and he tells a lowly Samaritan woman, that is the lowest of low in that culture, who he is for the very first time. And it's just amazing to me. And she, what she would do is she would go back and she would tell people, look at this, this man who has forgiven me. Tell me all that I've done. And I, the best thing, and you talk about this, the best thing to me, this is the moment that Jesus is going to sit people. And I can imagine him up on a hillside and he's talking to his disciples. And all of a sudden you can see people that are maybe coming his way because this woman is telling people, you got to go check out this guy. This is amazing. All that he has told me and all that he is. And people are flooding up that hillside and he looks down that hill as people are coming forward to want to find an answer. And he tells his disciples, look, the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Yep. To me, John 4 is it. I mean, think about that. If you want to know that he came for everybody, how cool is that? So that's a good one right that's there. That's pretty good. Right. I'll top that. My, my, <laughs> I, I tell you what, it, maybe it's just my nature, but to kind of call off what Pat said about um, our culture and reaching people, you know, even Jesus uh, broke the Sabbath laws. He was a bit of a radical, you know. He kind of didn't do, in, in fact, he fussed a lot at the Pharisees and other places because he didn't want religion. He had a divine relationship with the Father, and he's teaching us that. So I love the fact that he breaks the rules of the man so that he can have the relationship with God. And saving people, touching people is more important than following a list of rules, which is what, you know, what God is all That's about. That's awesome. So you Wednesday night people that come to church? <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite part of John is this, and I love this verse, John 6, 35. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And I cannot, I, for the life of me, I can't see how people do not want to accept that. Their lives are a mess. They're all screwed up. They're miserable. They're sad. Everything's wrong. And all he's saying, come to me and I will give you yeah. something that you will never, ever thirst again. Why don't they gravitate to that and accept that? But to me, that's my verse, John 6, 35. That's awesome. Powerful. We can talk all day. Listen, again, all we want you to do is take a look at this and read the Gospel of John. So here's what we'll do. I want to know your favorite part of John. When you read it, email me, brent at pathwayschurch.com, and I'll compile a list. I'll pull a winner, and you'll get some kind of gift card just for kind of playing along at home, um, just for, to have a little bit of fun. But I would love to know the favorite moment in John. John is so incredible, um, but it can't be John 3, 16. We're, that's all of our favorite moments. Okay. <laughs> Give us a moment. And again, I love it that, um, go back to Epic years ago, a real person came to a real place for a real purpose. Yeah. This is not a Bible story. This is a real account of what really took place for you and for me. Ultimately, the love of God shines bright, bright in John, probably the brightest 
and John in such a powerful way. So good stuff. Pastor Tim, Pastor Pat, we'll do this over and over. Um, just really journey along with us. Take the challenge. Let's pray. God, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I love it that we can talk about your word. It does not return void. The time that, that we're giving right now that everyone is just kind of paying attention. Maybe they're at home um, after work or during their lunch break, whenever, check taking a look at this on their phone. This is not like wasted time. This is valuable time. And get us fired up, excited to dive into our word and just think about the love of Christ. And that includes me and that includes all of us. And how awesome is that? Thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.